I think this is a pretty challenging question because we have to kind of visualize where exactly Q and N sit on that number line relative to M. We do know that they're both to the right of M, but we don't know their relative order and it's not even a yes no question, it's a value question. We need to figure out exactly what is the ratio of these two segments on the number line. Now I think we should probably start with statement two, it seems a little bit easier to evaluate. Statement two just tells us that Q sits somewhere in between M and N. So now we do know the relative order of these three tick marks on the number line, but we don't have any information about the ratio of the segments. So statement two is not sufficient on its own, and we should go ahead and eliminate the answer choices that claim that it is. So B and D are gone, and we're down to ACE. Let's evaluate statement one right after the intro. So statement one tells us that if we double the length of MN, that would be equivalent to tripling the length of MQ. Let's think about that for a moment. Can we tell which segment is longer just from that sentence? I think the segment that you'd only need to double would be longer than the segment that you'd need to triple for them to be equal to one another. So that means that MN is longer than MQ, which means that N is farther away from M than Q is, which means that Q is somewhere between M and N. And that's really familiar. I think that's exactly what statement two said. So this is one of those cases where one of the statements implies the other. And as I explain in section two of my book, which you can actually read for free on quantreasoning.com, since statement one implies statement two, we can eliminate answer choices B and C without even reading the question. Now we already eliminated B before the intro, but now we can go ahead and eliminate C as well. So we're down to just two answer choices now, A or E. Now we can use this ratio that statement one provided us with. We know that MN is the bigger of the two. So I'll take the numbers from that sentence, MN to MQ is three to two. Now you could get there algebraically if you prefer. We'd say that two MN equals three MQ and then divide both sides by MQ and divide both sides by two and we'd get MN to MQ is three to two. But we know that QN is the difference between those two. So if you have three ratio units for one segment and two ratio units for part of that segment, then the remaining part of the segment must be one ratio unit. Now do we have enough to answer the question? Yeah, we could say that QN to MQ is one to two. Therefore, the correct answer here is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.